All right, Pickle. It's week six of the Texas high school football season starts tonight. Tonight. Going to get some games on TexanLive.com if you want to go stream those games. Uh, but there are big games across every corner of the state, despite it being a large open date. A lot of, as we mentioned, 33% of the state is off this week, but we do still have some bangers to bring you uh, mm-hmm. all across the state of Texas. Without further ado, let's roll out the top 10 Texas high school football games this week. We're going to start in the middle, 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night in Refurio as the unbeaten Three Rivers Bulldogs. <laughs> When's the last time you said that? <laughs> Been a minute, but the unbeaten Three Rivers Bulldogs uh, take on, travel to take on District Foe Refurio. I'll tell you this about about Three Rivers. They're 5-0, and I don't think they're a cheap 5-0, and right? Mm-hmm. They've beaten Taft, which I think is a good win. They handed Banchetti their only loss of the year. Uh, and that opener over Fall City was really impressive. But we'll find out everything over the next two weeks. Because tonight, they're at, or tomorrow night, they're at Refurio. And a week from tomorrow, they're hosting Shiner. So we'll know. <laughs> Light now, schedule, huh? <laughs> now, now, this is a Three Rivers team that I think has, has looked pretty complete to start the year. I, I'm, I'm really excited about this Bulldog squad. Uh, specifically, you know, the defense has been very strong to start the year. And they've got a, a quarterback. They've got a quarterback and junior quarterback, uh, Caden Solis, who I think has been a real star, a real breakout star for them. They've got another junior uh, in, uh, in, in Caden Inman, who's been their star, uh, star running back. Their receivers are all juniors. This is a young, young, young team. So this may be a precursor for what may be an even bigger year next year. But we're going to find out a lot about them, what they do this tonight because it's or tomorrow night rather as they take on a refurio team uh that uh, any concerns you had about their uh for opening week loss to hitchcock you can file those away uh in a uh, in a file marked uh don't pay attention to these um because they've looked excellent ever since the defense has really rounded into form I, their signature win for me right now is that win a couple weeks ago uh, at Edna, where they beat a 3A Division One team, a good 3A Division One team, uh, by 18 points. Uh, now they're 1 0 in district, looking to move to 2 0, uh, you know, and, and stay on track for what could be a real heavy hitting matchup with Refur- or with uh, with Shiner there in week nine. So big game there in Refurio as number five Refurio welcomes in Three Rivers. Top left, let's go. 7 30 p.m. Friday night in Lorraine. I think you can make an argument that this is the game of the week. Mm-hmm. As the number one team in 1A Division Two, the Benjamin Mustangs take on the number five team in 1A Division Two, the Lorraine Bulldogs. Now, these are probably two teams we probably haven't talked enough about to start the year, considering their rankings. Mm-hmm. Part of it is that Benjamin Benjamin had trouble finding, finding uh, let's say, victims. Yes. Um, they've run through teams that frankly they're just a lot better than and they've treated them appropriately right they, they have been they are winning by an average margin of 72 points and remember there's a 45 point mercy rule mm-hmm. in this in this league and Grayson Rigdon is playing correct uh I believe so. so. I think so. Grayson Rigdon was uh, was injured a couple of weeks ago. Okay. I don't know his status as of the moment. I know that it wasn't considered to be super duper serious, mm-hmm. but we don't know. You know, it's not like not like they were saying, "Oh no, he snaps his leg in half. He's, right. he's out for the well, year." Well, yeah, and that's bad news for the rest of one A Division Two. Is if they're still blowing past people without him, um, there's <laughs> pain but, to oh be for had. sure now. But here's the thing: I think there's an argument to be made that this is the first team that can actually punch him in the mouth. Yeah, that's they true. Play, they play teams that, frankly, I think they're just a lot better than. And this is a Lorraine team that, if you're unfamiliar with Jake Popham's squad, this team is for real, and they are tested. They've got a win over Klondike. They've got a win over Ira. Uh, those are two pretty signature wins for them. Uh, now they get an opportunity to kind of stake their claim as arguably the team to beat in one A Division Two. You know, there's other good teams Russian Springs is rolling right now but I think for Lorraine this is a team with an opportunity to make some noise and I'm very interested to see what happens when this high-powered Benjamin offense takes on what has been a very sturdy Lorraine defense and furthermore first real test for this Benjamin defense because this, this Benjamin this this Lorraine offense uh, led by AJ Williams is a is a, he's the name to know for this squad he's already got 18 rushing touchdowns on the year I'm very excited about this seven this six-man game 1A division two tomorrow night in Lorraine how about tonight, 7 o'clock Thursday night in Houston as C.E. King visits Galena Park North Shore, the number one team, the new number one team in uh, 6A uh, in a game there in uh, at Galena Park ISD Stadium. Uh, this is a this is a, another interesting district test here in District 21 6A. You know, I think it's easy to get all caught up in basically North Shore and Atascocita, North Shore and Atascocita. But don't forget that I think very clearly, you know, depending on what you think of Summer Creek, mm-hmm. I think C.E. King looks like the third best team in that district. I agree. 
C. King, I get it very strong. You know, they had that. They've had such a weird that weird start to the year mm-hmm. where they blew out Crosby and then they got smoked by Allen. And you're like, okay, well, what now? Since then, they've kind of said and they've figured out exactly what they are. This is a, this is a pretty high flying offense. I think that you know their offense, I think, is really impressive, and and what they've been able to do, uh, most notably with their uh, with their uh, their running game. Their running game has been very strong, uh, led by Keith Willis Jr. He's been their star, and then they've got a dual threat quarterback they're rolling out there in Denham Johnson that I think has been a real breakout star. But this is a North Shore team that looks like a different animal. They look like a different beast. And and the way that they're they're playing offensively, defensively, in every phase of the game, uh, they look like they could be one of the very best North Shore teams we've seen in a while. Mm-hmm. They're not impervious to, to, to pain, but I do think that they've got to be the favorite in this game. We'll find out a lot more about exactly how C.E. King stacks up against the real big dogs um, you know, uh, when, they take on, uh, when they take on this North Shore team tonight. 7.30 p.m. Friday night. In Stephenville, it's the 78th meeting of the Battle of 377. As the number one team in four division, one of the Stephenville Yellow Jackets, welcome in arch rival Brownwood, uh, who is uh, number nine in the rankings. I've said my piece about Stephenville before. Mm-hmm. Um, that defense is troubling. Uh, the offense is incredible. Yes. It's incredible. It's That's like, how they keep winning. It's maybe, all things considered, it might be the best offense pound per pound in the state. It's unbelievable. Which they're doing without their star senior quarterback, exactly. Ryder Lambert. Ryder Lambert's been hurt, I believe, with a broken foot has been the, the issue with them. I mean, when you take a look at what they've been doing offensively, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Uh, they're averaging more than 52 points per game. Mm-hmm. Like, a- as Gaga's were going over, like, Galena Park North Shore, they're averaging, they're, they are averaging more or as many points as mm-hmm. Galena Park North Shore in, in, per game. I mean, they've been spectacular. The issue for me is on their defensive side because their defense has been quite bad. Their defense is giving up 46 points per game. Okay, They are the only team with a winning record in, in 5A division. Or rather, so here's, here's a complete list of teams that are giving up 40-plus points per game in 4A division 1 with a winning record. Ready? Laferia, who's 3-2, and two, and Stephenville. And yep. Stephenville is giving up four more points per game than Lafaria. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are fifth from the bottom in four A Division One in, in defense, which is so backwards from the state championship team that we saw last. Oh yeah, year. last year their defense held them in a lot of the games. So here's Brownwood. Brownwood coming off of I thought a really complete performance against Waco Conley. Their defense has been very consistent. Yes. Sammy Burnett's got them playing, and I think this quarterback I call has stepped up in a big way. Mm-hmm. A lot of this comes down to weather, and like if this gets into a shootout, Brownwood's not built to get into a shootout. No. Their offense is good, but it's not Stephenville good. Right. But so they've got to win with their defense. They've mm-hmm. got to come up with stops and then just kind of cash in whenever they can. Um, I'm very excited to see how this one shakes out. Um, we'll talk about this more in the picks video, but this is this is a game to keep an eye on there in the Battle of 377. 7 o'clock Friday night in Grapevine. Live on TexanLive.com. Let's go. A top 10 matchup in 5A Division 2. It's the Battle of the Red Rail as the Grapevine Mustangs take on the Colleyville Heritage Panthers and two teams that I think are kind of bobbing along in 5A Division 2 and just doing what they need to do to stay in the rankings. Mm -hmm. Like, Grapevine's got one loss, but it's Argyle, right? And it was a relatively competitive loss to them. I thought that they played particularly, you know, pretty well in that game. And their offense uh, has been very, very strong to start the year. Um, They have been... I'm very excited to see what this offense is able to do um, in, in this particular game because this is an offense... Most notably with the, the the playmakers they've got, I think that Kai Pruitt, their their receiver has been very strong, and then they've got uh, I think a really they I believe they settled on the 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 junior quarterback uh, Luke Ulrich to be their QB. Yes, and he's been very strong as well. Taking on a grapevine team, um, taking on a grapevine team that was Colleyville Heritage. This is a uh, you know this is this taking on a, a Colleyville Heritage team rather that for me. Their best result of the year, I mean, it, it kind of depends on what you think of Ennis because they've got a, a win mm-hmm. at Ennis, which is no mean feat. Right. But they are now, the, but their their best result, I think, is what was a pretty close loss. Um, to Texas High. To Texas High. They hung in that game for about three quarters before Texas High pulled away there. Texas, uh, but this is a big test for both these teams. A lot of... Uh, a lot of emotions in this game. Mm-hmm. This was, of course, a Valley Sports Southwest game last year. We saw the emotions in this game. Well, Parker and it's the first time that this one's a, a district game, too. Yeah. And it's a district game, too. So it's a lot on the line, and I do think this because, is a district. Because, what, Colleyville moved down? Yeah. I do think this is the 4-5A Division Two championship game, in mm-hmm. my opinion. With all due respect to 
uh, another game we'll get to in the picks. And it's funny right. because this is technically the first home game for Colleyville Heritage mm-hmm. of the year, but it's at the stadium that these two teams yeah. share as their home stadium. Right. So that's just a fun little nugget. It is. <laughs> 7 o'clock Friday night in Bushland. We're about to talk to the head coach of the Bushland Falcons, the number five team in 3A Division One, as they welcome in an unbeaten squad from 4A in El Paso, Riverside. If you're unfamiliar with this Riverside team, they're not an accident. No, they're good. (laughs) This team's for real, and they've got a playmaker that is going to drop your jaw in Speedy Munoz. Speedy Munoz has been really fun to watch in this uh, over the course of his career. Uh, The the quarterback is uh, thrown for eight touchdowns. He's run for another eight touchdowns. He has been a star in the making. Uh, This is a but they're making a long trip to Bushland up to Potter County to take on a Bushland team that we mentioned has a pretty impressive resume. Wins over Canadian and wins over Dumas. uh, I think have really buoyed them. Their quarterback, their junior quarterback Dawson Jaco has stepped up in a big way keep an eye on this game because I think we'll find out a lot about these two undefeated squads tonight or tomorrow night in Bushland 7.30 p.m. Friday night in Maynor. The Maynor Mustangs welcome in the uh, number 17 team in 6A, the Austin Vandegrift Vipers. Uh, look, uh, this is... Uh, okay. Th- I think this is a prove-it game for, for Maynor. Yes. They're 4-0, and and they're rolling, and there's a lot to like about this team. They've got the win over LBJ. Mm-hmm. They've got a win over San Antonio Cornerstone, who's always a very good private school team. And I'll tell you that the next two weeks, Vandergrift and Round Rock will tell the tale. Quentin Joyner has been a star for them. I think their defense is really underrated simply because everyone talks about the running game. Right. But this is a huge game as they take on a Vandergrift squad that shook off that, you know, that we they, they got beat by Dripping Springs in the week one. And I think we all kind of like hovered our hand over the panic button, mm-hmm. but since then they've ride the ship. And a lot of it has had to do with that offense has really figured out exactly what they they are. Brayden Buchanan, their quarterback, has been great. The defense has been pretty consistently strong, which mm-hmm. is going to be, that's the real showcase matchup here, is can the Vandegrift defense, which has been very strong all consistently, can they slow down Quentin Joyner and this Maynard attack? Well, and for me too, this doesn't just tell, like you said, they've got next week against Round Rock as well that will really decide. I think those are easily the top three teams in that District 25-6A, but I honestly think that if Maynard can pull this out, they're not only going to solidify themselves as probably the front runners in that district. I think at that point that kind of sends signals to Region 4 because Mm -hmm. the likelihood of them going D2 and possibly being able to kind of run that would be high very yep. high i think that you're right so uh, a lot to learn from this district uh, this district showdown uh, especially i think on the mainer side that's a team to keep an eye on 730 p.m. friday night in wall the number 10 team in 3a division two the wall hawks welcome in a a two-way power in mason and look it's funny because we haven't really talked a ton about mason this year um, this is a this is a Mason ball club, and and part of it I think is because they lost their opener. Mm-hmm. They lost to Coleman seven to six. Now, you're familiar with Coleman. Mm-hmm. They played your beloved Ye- Lano Yellow Jackets. They did. Would you say that Coleman's pretty good ball club? Yes, and at the time, I don't think we knew how good of a ball club Coleman was yes. when they lost to him. I think that I think that that is a loss, especially a one point loss that has aged very well, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Since then, they've been rolling. Their defense has been very strong, uh, and of course, that that running game which, in the wing tee has been the the calling card. Ryan Todd, kind of the junior, kind of leading the way for this Mason team. Now they go on the road to Wall. And take on a a wall team that is you know they're doing their thing on the ground again. I mean they're they're averaging six and a half yards a carry uh, with guys like Nathan Pepper and guys like Garrett Guy. Uh, they're they're kind of running toting the mail for them. This has been a really impressive start for this wall ball club. Uh, they have started the year. Let's see, their one who's their one loss to uh, Cisco, a four point loss against Cisco. Now, that's a 2A team, but at the same time, I think that's a pretty darn good 2A team, state-ranked mm-hmm. 2A team. Uh, and since then, they have been very strong. They beat Jim Ned 3 nothing. Yeah. <laughs> defense because, has been very sure. good. <laughs> but that is. But remember, when you think about Wall, the running game feeds the defense. So mm-hmm. excited to see what happens there. 7 o'clock tonight in Katy. Live on TexanLive.com. Let's go. The number five team in 6A, the Katy Tigers. Welcome in. The Warriors of Katie Jordan. And if this is the first time you've ever heard of Katie Jordan, allow me to get you up to speed. This is a first-year UIL varsity program. Mm -hmm. And I am here to tell you, I think they're for real. Okay? Last week, they beat Katie Pato. And they didn't just beat Katie Pato. Mm -hmm. They mulched Katie Pato. 
41 to 13, a dominant effort over them. Their offense has been spectacular. The defense has not been far behind. I think that what you're seeing from uh, Mike Rabe squad has been re- is 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 for real. I think they are I think they're a real contender to make up to grab a playoff spot uh, here. Now, we know what they're dealing with. Mm-hmm. They're going they're going and taking on the number 5 team in the state and the team that's run that district forever in in the Katy Tigers. And I don't think I have any illusions that Jordan's going to go beat Katie, right? Seth Spiller, their running back, has been spectacular. They're throwing the ball actually pretty well, and their defense, I think, is rounding into form. But this is a real measuring stick uh, for this team. And and I think that, you know, for Colin Willits, the quarterback, uh, and, and for Chad Gaspar, the, the running back, this is a team, obviously, as a first-year UIL program, they're very, very young. Mm-hmm. But they're ahead of schedule. They're and, big, too. They really mm-hmm. are. This is going to be a real, like... Line like like this is a, a, a line of demarcation here that we're going to learn exactly where Katie Jordan is in their program development when they get to measure up against against the the big boys right they get to measure up against Katie. It also helps too, like you mentioned, kind of getting a pulse on where Katie Pato is too, because oh, that yeah. was a program I think that we just had questions mm-hmm. about. You know, you're moving up to six A. How is it gonna How is it gonna shake out? What are they for real again? And if if they go out there and Katie Jordan is able to. You know, if they get blown out, then yes. you're worried yes. about Peyto. Yes, I would agree. And finally, seven o'clock Friday night in Magnolia, the number six team in five of Division One, the Richmond Foster Falcons go on the road to take on Magnolia West in a game that I think has an opportunity to be a real low-scoring slugfest. Two good defenses in this one. If you're not paying attention to Richmond Foster's defense, you are missing out. This defense has been fantastic with Demetrius Godfrey and Christopher Gore. Uh, this Mustangs defense has been very strong as well, making big splash plays with Tyler Harsh and Clayton O'Hearn. A lot of this comes down to how well Magnolia West can contain Ashton Ojaku. Ashton Ojaku for Richmond Foster is the real deal. This kid's awesome, and he's going to be the single individual best playmaker on the field in a District 10-5A Division One that does not have a ton of margin for error. You've got to make sure you win this game if you're Magnolia West, or else you start, or for both these teams, really, you start questioning whether or not you're getting into the playoffs because it's a deep, dangerous district. So those are the top 10 Texas high school football games this week. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.